Welcome to Chapter 3, Part 2. In the prior part, we set up our door actor and its components. We have not yet made any programming on it to open the door. So let's get started on doing that now. I'm going to go back into my door actor. And in here, in my event graph, if you're not in your event graph already, you can click on the tab at the top of your center section. In your event graph, we don't need any of these three pre-existing nodes, so we can remove those. Instead, we want to detect when the player has overlapped into our trigger volume, which we made earlier. So select your trigger volume, and in your event graph, where it's still selected, right click in the empty space, and type in begin overlap. And you'll see add on component begin overlap. Choose that option. Now this overlap will trigger when the player enters this trigger uh, volume. When it has done so, we want to check that it is actually the player that has entered the volume. To do so, drag from other actor from the output pin, and we want to compare that with the player character. So use equals equals, and we're going to drag from the other blue pin, get player character. And what this will do will compare the other actor that has entered the volume with the character that's currently being played by the player and the output whether it's true or false. This will go into a branch. A shortcut for adding branches is holding down the B key and left clicking. So if it is the player that is in that volume, the true will trigger. If it's true, we want to, to enable the input on this door. So right click and get player controller. From your player controller, we're going to grab out our return value and enable input. The player controller needs to go into where it says player controller, not the target. The target is the actor that you want to enable input on, in this case, the door. So that's enabled input on the door. We now need to do the opposite to disable input. So rather than doing begin it, overlap, we're going to do an end overlap. So we're going to select the trigger volume again, right click, end overlap. Add on component, end overlap. And the rest of it is exactly the same. So I'm going to select all of this minus the enable input, control C and control V to paste it back in. So other actor is going to go into my comparator. My execute line is going to go into my branch. We're then from true going to disable input and connect the player controller to it. Click compile. And you should get a nice green tick on the compile. So now we've enabled input when we enter it, we can now actually input events onto our door. Now at the start in chapter one, we create an interact event. So look for the interact event. When this event is pressed, we want the door to open. So we'll do that in another part. For now, I just wanted to make it a print string to test that it's working. Print strings are very useful for testing purposes and only used for development. So this is going to output hello onto the screen. Play, walk into my door, push E, and there you see it prints hello. And if I walk away from it and push E again, it won't push, it won't say hello. So now we've got the overlap working for our door. What we can do now is make the door open. So the door opening is handled by a timeline. So we want to go and add a timeline and call it door opening. Your interact will go into play from start. Now with a timeline, you can double click on it to open up your timeline options. The timeline is currently blank. We need to add what we call tracks to it to indicate what's going to be happening over time. Up the top left, you'll have add float track, add vector track, add event track, add color track, length, and various Boolean tick boxes for options regarding our timeline. 
I'm going to click on new float track and this track is going to be called door position I'm also going to add another float track to this and this can be key position click compile if we go back to my event graph you can see these tracks are now appeared as outputs on my timeline so the way a timeline works is once it's triggered it will go through the timeline and any values that are on this will be output through the update so over there, what we can do with this is control the position of items such as the door or the key and make them move so speaking of the key that's what we'll be creating next so join us in the next part where we'll be creating the key thank you very much for watching this episode if you like what I do and you want to see more content before anyone else, please consider supporting me for at least a dollar over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. For just a dollar, you can get access to all these videos early before anyone else, sometimes well ahead of anyone else. And I'll take this moment to say a big thank you for all my supporters so far in supporting me in making this channel content. Wouldn't be doing this without you guys, so a big thank you to all of you. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.